Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here. Maybe you're planning to pick up Gallagher from the free 4-star selector or maybe got a couple of him as you're pulling for Acheron or maybe Luota. And in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play this character, how to build him properly. And some of you, maybe you are Googling or you YouTube how to play Gallagher, how to build him because you realize that when you went into auto battle, half your team end up dead for no rhyme or reason and you don't know why. Is it something that you're doing wrong? First of all, I just want to tell you to chill out, relax. It's not you. The AI for Gallagher as of 2.1 seems to be very similar to the logic set for characters like Lynx and Natasha. AI meaning the auto battle mode. If you play on auto battle with Natasha and Lynx all the time, they feel very, very comfortable. But Gallagher is very, very uncomfortable to play him in this format. Why is that? Why do I say that? It's because all or majority of his healing actually comes from his ultimate ability. You want to land this as soon as possible, as much as you can. But for the AI, for some reason, they hold this. And in this video, I'm actually going to be teaching you how to build around that um, holistically as well, build this character holistically, unless until, of course, we reach the point where the artificial intelligence becomes a bit smarter, or maybe you're playing with other characters, which we'll talk about in this video as well. But this is a very general build. First things first, what stats do you want to aim for? He has a burst cost of 110, and as we mentioned, this is pretty much where most of his healing will come from. His skill is useful because it cleanses with E2, uh, but it's a very, very flat HP heal, and it doesn't scale off with anything like attack percentage or HP percentage or anything. It's just a flat heal amount. What is important to know is this character scales with break effect. So it converts 50% of your break effect to outgoing healing, which caps off at 75% uh, outgoing healing, which is 150% break effect but many people read this and start thinking oh uh if i see this here means i need 150 break effect because uh, a character like ron is exactly the same he has break effect requirement we need to hit that threshold unlike gallagher uh, unlike ron may you're not aiming for like a damage threshold where you need to like hit a certain amount of uh, percentage so that she gets damage bonus here, Gallagher gives you nothing but healing when you have high amounts of break effect. So don't make this a hu super huge priority. At most, you overheal, but for now, overheal isn't converted to any damage. So it's not a huge criteria. My recommendation, TLDR, in terms of stats, you want to split your resources equally between finding speed and finding break effect. Now, a lot of people might think, I need to hit that 150, I need to hit that 150. Then they run a very slow Gallagher. I think that's a huge mistake. This character wants to move a lot as well because his ultimate ability inflicts a debuff on the enemy so that when, when enemies hit this like besotted enemy, you get like healing and stuff like that. So the more you can keep up the uptime on application and the more skill point positive this character is, you're, you don't even have to use your skill to heal enemies because your besotted just purely like hit, sustains your entire team. You could have like a three turn positive three skill point Gallagher if he moves very fast relative to the enemies and relative to the rest of the team. So I think speed is very important, but of course, try to go a bit into break effect as well because that converts over to healing damage, bo uh, healing bonus, which is very nice because it helps uh, keep up the overall sustain of the overall team. One thing I want to say is energy restoration rate is a tricky one. If you have maybe his signature light cone at S5, or his own person like Cone, this one, what is real, S5, you have more break effect here. I would say you can shift more towards uh, energy restoration. For me, because I only have this at S1, my gear isn't that fantastic. Uh, I'm actually opting for a different build, focusing more on break effect rather than energy restoration. Uh, that is my build. So going into, let's first start off with relics, shall we? And don't mind the dead characters on screen. I will show you a run towards the end of the video as well to show you how it works. Uh, let's go into the synthesis menu and I'm going to be telling you some relic recommendations uh, to go for. Out of all of the relics in the game, the four piece is probably quite easy to understand. Um, he gets value out of speed, so you want to go for a like, two piece speed bonus here. Very, very excellent because you gain 6% speed, he wants to move faster. And on top of that, he skills with break effect and healing bolt and he wants to have heal. So your choice is either the passerby of Wandering Cloud two piece or you could go for Thief of Shooting Meteor 2-piece, or last but not least is the Watchmaker Master of Dream Machinations 2-piece. So 2-piece, break effect, 2-piece, healing bonus, is either one of those. And then speed is, in my opinion, like a necessity. A combination of those is probably one of his most comfy uh, slots as well. Some people are planning to go for a 4-piece Thief of Shooting Meteor. I think this is okay as well. But for a more general build where you don't really need to care whether you're bringing uh, Gallagher into fire weakness enemies, 
this speed, 6 speed, is just offers a lot more versatility in terms of roster. And because you're, you're probably not building your team composition based on your sustain, right? You're most likely building your team compositions based on your DPS. So you want your sustain to be as general as you can. So my recommendation is ma Messenger Traversing Hacker Speeds. One thing to note is you can't use the 4-piece here. Um, his out doesn't apply on an ally. It's an attack on the enemy. Same for Machinations, uh, Watchmaker is also not an ally. Ultimate is not used on an ally, unlike the other sustains in the game, like Ninx and Natasha. It's very similar to Luota, Gallagher in that sense. So that is a huge caveat. And in terms of main stats, the feat is very clear. I think uh, speed is probably the best. He wants to move more. He wants to get more energy reservation. You probably know it too as well. Sub stats go for break effect. If you can't find a good break effect speed boot on set, on the set that you're looking for, just go for the main stat first. Don't compromise and go like HP and attack percentage because you have a 20% break effect sub. Don't do that. Speed is very, very important as well. And that is one huge thing that I want to talk about. Body. This is where I actually spend majority of my time testing out on. I was wanting to know whether a damage build, a crit rate, crit damage kind of build would be very strong in him or attack percentage because he skills off with those. Unfortunately, I don't, I'm not very, very enthusiastic about after trying out his numbers. I don't like it personally. I have Gallagher at E6. Still not fantastic. I think outgoing healing bonus is likely the best uh, so that you can get a bit more sustain for the rest of the team because for now, the AI is a bit dumb. So when you have his out up, you want to quickly burst heal your teammates as quickly as possible. If not, you get bursted down very, very fast if you don't have that instant heal when Gallagher uses his out and basic attacks and stuff. So I say outgoing healing bonus for the body. I did testing on damage. Didn't really like it so much. For substats, for all of them, go for speed. Um, go for break effect. Those two are probably the best. And attack percentage is uh, far away third, in my opinion, at least. So next up, the two-piece. The two-piece is where the options are actually quite varied. You have quite a bit of things that you can use. My personal choice is Panicani Land of Dreams because I don't mind playing him in a fire break team. Um, and energy restoration is always universal. You get a bit of like damage buff for same type wearers. I think Panicani Land of Dreams is very nice, but there are many, many options for this character, uh, in my opinion, at least. Um, you have stuff like, let me see, let me see. We have, I mean, all the buffing sets like Fleech of Ageless, uh, Space Things is not so. Like Fleech of Ageless gives attack bonus. You have Broken Kill, which gives crit damage to the entire team, gives him a bit of effect rest. These are all okay as well. Um, similarly for Spidely Von Wax, also okay. You get him to move a little bit faster straight up. But I think Panicani Land of Dreams consistency across is probably a bit better. And the thing is, if you are looking for break effect, Talia Kingdom Inventory does give quite a lot because Gallagher really wants to um, have high speed. So naturally, you will be finding that you will hit 145 quite easily, especially if you have a couple of rolls in some of your substats, because you're really only looking for break effect or speed. So this, I think, is very efficient to farm. You, then you get straight away like 36% break effect. Uh, very, very efficient, especially if S5 or the free-to-play light cone, you can pretty much hit 150 quite easily with a two-piece Talia. So, but depending on how your gear works out, if you don't, if you already have a lot of break effect, I would say Panacani gives you energy restoration rate a little bit better. And this caveat feeds in into what we want, what I want to talk about into the link rope. So my preference is to get break effect up to the threshold first because break effect converts over to outgoing healing bonus. So if I were to, let let me just go into the, my Gallagher so you can see my gear real quick. I am running a two-piece messenger traversing hack space, two-piece watchmaker, and a two-piece panicani land of dreams. The most important thing I think is this break effect here, 64% converts also to a 32% outgoing healing bonus as long as you are still within the threshold. If you notice here, this means that outgoing healing bonus is exactly that. So by putting on this link rope, you're effectively getting two main stats. You're getting another body plus you're getting a link rope. So this is a very, very solid one to get. Uh, of course, if you haven't hit the threshold. If, for example, maybe you're now like 200% break effect, you could drop this and I would recommend you go for something like uh, energy restoration one instead and then you can find break effect in the subs because one thing to note is uh, break effect can be found in subs but energy restoration rate cannot and if you have like godlike gear a speed and and break effect one in the subs a super nice one um you you probably will be at much more efficient value but that's of course a huge caveat that you are at the 150 percent threshold because this is super efficient to convert into outgoing healing bonus as well the link rope is where it, uh is is at first not intuitive but then you will get it after a while uh, he doesn't really need, in my opinion, like HP or attack. He doesn't really draw too much aggro very often. Doesn't have a taunt in build. Um, it's okay in terms of survivability. 
in my opinion. So I think fire damage bonus is all right to use on him since he's outdoes a bit of damage. He has an enhanced basic attack which benefits from it as well. But if you're scrapped of resources, you don't have too much, I think you could get by with like barely an attack percentage or HP percent, defense percentage. All could work quite well on him um, because he doesn't really do a lot of damage. This is just like purely for, for my... Uh, I wanted to hit like speed thresholds and whatnot to move a little bit faster. But that is for the Relic build and overall what I think. Let me know in the comments so far. We are talking about light cones in a bit, but let me know whether you guys have any varying builds so that we all can learn from each other. New, very new characters overall. Um, let's talk a bit of Eilons before we go into light cones. What are some important ones? You probably could pick this up, this character up for free. I already talked about it on the other video where we compare like all the free four stars. Check that video out if you already maybe got Gallagher and you want to like decide what to use with your other resource. But otherwise, critical ones. Uh, Salty Dog uh, is nice because you get a bit of extra energy straight away, but I don't really care too much about this. Uh, he doesn't really get additional perks from like all this stuff. E2 is the one that I really, really like. This is what makes him, his downsides all disappear versus like a character like Lynx and Natasha because you start removing debuffs from target allies when you skill. Very similar to Natasha, very similar to Luota, very similar to Bronya, where you have that cleanse. Very, very important. It's what Bailu doesn't have, which makes her not as good as a lot of the other four-star healers even. Um, and incre increase some effect rest. So this, this is pretty nice that they added this in too to make them a bit more sustainable. For extend the duration of Besotted, this is very strong as well. So you have the debuff lasting longer, allowing him to maybe uh, not have his out uptime or his out use so much. And last but not least, of course, is break effect 20% and weakness break efficiency by 20%. This, I think, is not super crucial. You can get a lot of the thresholds with S5, free, his free-to-play light cone. So the break effect here is just a cherry on top, allows you to move over to energy restoration rate. That is, that's what I think. Um, the one that is really nice is this weakness break efficiency by 20%. Means that he pretty much can solo fire weakness enemies, especially if you have a weakness break enhancer in the simulated universe or a character like Ranmei on the same team. Um, you probably could do just with him like a, if you play fire MC in in like a break effect build bruiser kind of build Gallagher will feel a lot more solid as well so let's talk about light cones now we mentioned a little bit about it but for this let's go into the data bank here so we can see like everything all in one screen I think it's going to be like way more clearer to look at abundance light cones he can use a few the let's talk about the most obvious one first and then I will tell you why you want to deviate away from this so first things first of course is what is real this is at Super Imposition 5, this is a free light code. It gives you a third of his overall break effect requirement. So 48% is massive. Together with Thief of Shooting Meteor, you get like another 16%. You pretty much already have like more or less 64%. If you run Talia Kingdom of Bantry, you're already almost close to 100% break effect, which is very, very easy to find the remaining stats uh, for break effect. So it allows you to go into an energy restoration rope very, very easily and run very high amounts of speed. That's why I think what is real is very, very useful. It's free. So like just swap it out free, swap it on him, going to be really strong. What I don't really like about this is his basic attack heals himself, which is kind of iffy because um, he doesn't really draw aggro. He has no like inbuilt taunt or anything. So that is one thing that I know. Um, that is what is real. Other than that, like other than stat, if let's say you have got like gear, like you are very late into the game, you farm a lot. Let me give you a few alternatives if you don't care too much about that break effect. Maybe you already heal enough because you have him at like um, 8, 12, 12 or something like that. All of his multipliers are already at E6 and you realize you overheal a lot. You don't really care too much about break effect. In that case, you want to consider building him for a bit more utility. Here are a few ways. If you want pure utility in terms of getting more skill points, multiplication is very, very useful because it helps speed up his turns. Although it's a three-star light cone, a lot of you might be wondering why is it? Why will you ever use this? He doesn't use his skill too much because he's out. He already heals if you attack the enemy, the besotted enemy. So this allows you to get even more skill points, twenty percent more because he keeps pushing every time he basic attacks, and he pretty much really basic attacks all the time. Uh, especially if you have his, you follow the builds and you have good amounts of healing and uptime on his uh, out as well. This is very very strong. Only downside is a three star, so you are very very squishy. Uh, being a 4-star character, he doesn't have too much base stats on his own. So he's very fragile if you go through this build. That is why this is um, not super, super recommended. Another one that can be used is, of course, Quid Pro Quo. But some of you Akron means that you're playing with Akron. This is not going to be very useful. You get a bit of RNG element that you can kind of control because uh, you could always control who has less than 50% energy by 
using or not using certain skills yet and then you can funnel the energy correctly so it becomes pseudo random slightly less random in that sense but this is very good it's also a free to play light cone this funnels energy into a lot of characters every time uh, you start a turn Gallagher moves very fast he does want to take a lot of turns and is able to like funnel a lot of energy into your other teammates as well so this is pretty good especially if you're running in like um, with pure fiction Argenti who wants to burst a lot this probably could be quite attractive to consider the other one that I think is also pretty nice is actually the first time that I'm actually looking at this is Worms Shortens the Cold Knight. This is a, unfortunately a paid battle pass like Cone, but I think this is interesting because being a 4-star, he naturally has very low stats. This uh, battle pass like Cone is a pseudo 5-star, it's like a 4.5-star stats. Uh, so it gives him, it breaks even, moves him closer to the Luota kind of stats, the 5-star stats and Huo stats uh, just a little bit but it gives him that HP that he wants to even be much more tankier. And on top of that, he uses basic attack almost all the time. Having a bit of sustain every time he attacks does make up for the downsides of this character, especially when you're playing on auto. At least you give some sort of sustain to the rest of your team. I think that Warm Shortens the Code Knights is finally possibly useful uh, on Gallagher, but um, you are sacrificing break effect and some skill point generation for multiplication. Uh, next up, Let's talk about the rest here and then we will probably wrap it up with the signature light cone and then we'll talk about some teams that, uh, that I want to share with you guys that I think is very interesting and maybe a showcase too uh, uh, right at the end of how to play the, the character. So perfect timing. A lot of people might be looking at this and um, this increases effect rest and increases outgoing healing by a set amount of effect rest. Since he gets effect rest on his E1, a lot of people think might be this might be quite good, which I agree could be quite strong as well. Um, this is possible if you if we start to enter matches with a lot more debuffs on the target. Uh, this way, at least he heals a lot more. He doesn't get CC'd as often because um, if he is CC'd, unfortunately, everything is just like broken because you need him to keep his out uptime. It's very, very squishy. So harder content with a lot of uh, debuffs. I see perfect timing as very strong. For now, if without like much CC, we don't have like too many Kafka bosses. Uh, we don't have too many like crowd control stun mechanics in the game. So I think perfect timing can chill out a while, not an urgent rush. If you have one, very nice, uh, but no urgent rush so far. Post-op conversation. Initially, I thought this was going to be his best like light cone for auto battle because it gives him a lot of energy restoration rate. At S5, it's a whooping 16%. But the AI is absolutely dumb. They don't use his ultimate for, I have no idea what reason. I'll, I can show you in the demo later on. Um, which is why I don't really like this. Until they switch it, then energy restoration becomes a bit more viable. Uh, but for now, I think I would much rather favor the more uh, AI independent break effect rather than energy restoration rate. And also post up conversations, a limited light cone, so it's a bit hard to get. Uh, Shad feeling I don't really like too much. Outgoing healing is nice, but he doesn't really want to use skill at all. So all you're getting here is like 10% outgoing healing at superimposition 1. Way better stuff that you can do because even at S5, 20% outgoing healing bonus. If you just, for example, get his what is real um, at S5, this is already a 24% break effect if you convert it based on his talent. So you're getting way more value out of a free S5 what is real rather than Shad feeling. And uh, last but not least, the new here, hey over here, like cone. Was this uh, event like cone or is it like now free? I can't really remember, but I'm just going to talk about it real quick. Uh, increases HP is very nice, but of course, you notice it's less than the battle pass one, which was like 1,050, um, but it still brings him a bit more chunkier. Where he uses the skill, hardly uses his skill, honestly. Uh, increases his outgoing healing by 28%. I don't really like this one too much. It's okay. It's, it's decent. It's better than a lot of the other light cones, for example, like post-op conversation, but there are much more like better free-to-play alternatives that you can like just consider. I won't talk about limited light cones because probably you don't care too much, but if you have them, you can use them, especially Luota's light cone as we talked about on our Luota light cone video. I highly recommend you check it out if you want more on that, but um, let's talk about this time waits for no one. Some people might have this. Maybe you got RNG lucky. I think this is pretty good. It gives you a lot of HP, which a 4-star character desperately needs. If not, they'll be way too squishy and way too unreliable. Gives him even more HP in the subs here. Um, of course, at Super Imposition 1, you get 18%. Outgoing healing bonus, very nice. Gets him more sustained. And then he also has a bit more offensive ability. Is whenever like you record outgoing healing bonus, you do like, some damage here. More on uh, This one is mostly used for a bit of the main stats, where you have a huge amount of HP and defense and attack, and also like scaling with the the first two passive. The last one is just like a nice bonus on the side. So with that being said, let me talk about some team comps and let's like go into some demo. 
Okay, and in this video, right now, this segment, I'm going to be showing you a team composition of Gallagher together with Akron. I think this is a pretty solid team. If you want more team compositions, check out the Gallagher video we have on the channel already. Um, but anyway, since she's on the banner, most people are probably playing with her. Gallagher can be gotten for free. One of the biggest downsides I think about Gallagher is he is absolutely horrendous on when he uses his ultimate ability. The AI kind of like has it as a, as a threshold. Only if your teammates are below like 50% HP, then it triggers. Uh, very similar to like that of Lynx and Natasha. So Mano mode, unfortunately, is where it's more comfy to play him right now, at least for my feel. So I am going to hit and yeah, let's just use an out since uh, we can get quite a bit back. Get some control. So one of the biggest downsides I feel about Gallagher and why I think it's important to have a lot of speed and energy restoration as well, you can see that your team is basically struggling until Gallagher gets his out up so that they can actually like heal and sustain properly. So I'm going to just show you if I heal Rami right now and I on the auto, the logical thing was to actually out with Gallagher's ulti so that you have the bizalted state on the enemy. Uh, so yeah, Akron get her stack a bit more, but he keeps it for for some reason. The AI just thinks it's better to keep it for now in version 2.1. I think they will correct this because it's very, very frustrating, honestly. Um, and for those of you who play Abundance, you want to have some sort of way in, in flexibility and AFK kind of like automatically. So you see, he keeps it until he hits like a 50% threshold. Because he healed her, now he doesn't use it at all. So that is just a free wasted damage that's going on. Um, so if any of you are playing him, make sure Make, please make sure that you actually switch off the, the auto battle mode. You have to go on mano to maximize its value. If not, you'll be like, this character is so weak, doesn't do anything. It's, it's not you, or not the character, it's just how it is. Interesting how it's all countered the debuffs in the same turn. So, or is it because the boss died so she doesn't gain any stacks? But yeah, if you found this video helpful, uh, check out our other videos on the channel on either Gallagher or as well as Akron or Luota even if you put on any. If you are looking for adventuring, we have that too. Check those videos out. And guys, thank you guys so much for watching again. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, share as well if you found it useful and might help other people who maybe got this character for free and really love his design. I think it's pretty cool. But thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.